Hey kiddos, this week we are multiplying fractions in a bunch of different ways. And let's dive in and take a look at our first way, which is using models. So when we're multiplying 1 8 times 3, we are saying that we have 1 8, and how many do we have of them? We have 3. So 1, 2, I could probably make that a little bit darker. There we go. 1, 2, three eighths. Let's see if our multiplication matches. One eighth times three, no denominator, give it one. One times three is three. One times eight is eight. Our picture and our math match. I have one sixth and I have two of them. So one, two. Remember, we can also talk about this as decomposing fractions. Multiply one times two is two. Six times one is six, two sixths. Our picture and our math matches. Coming down here, we have one fourth and we have one of them. So we have one fourth and we multiply. One times one is one, four times one is four. Our pictures and our math match. Over here, we have one fifth and we have four of them. So we have one, two, three, and four. Let's see if our math matches. Give it a denominator. One times four is four. Five times one is five. They match. Down here, I have one sixth and I have five of them. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Let's check it with our math. No denominator, give it one. One times five is five. Six times one is six. Five, six, the picture. And our math matches. Last one, we have one eighth and we have seven of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Let's check it with our math. Give it a denominator. Seven times one is seven. Eight times one is eight, seven eighths, the picture, and our math matches. Any questions, bring it with you to class. All right, so faces, this one, we were doing some fill in the blank. I know this was a stretch, but we need to use what we know to figure out what's missing. So in order for my fraction to be a one, that means the top and the bottom of my fraction have to be the same. In order to get a three and a three, we're going to multiply by three because one third times three is three over three or whole number one. Coming over here, we want to end up with two, which means our top has to be 10 because 10 divided by five is two. Five times two gives me 10. So I have five over one times two fifths. Five times two is 10. 1 times 5 is 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. Coming down here, I want my top number to be a 9, which means I have to multiply by a 3 on the bot on the top, and I'd like a 6 on the bottom. Let's check it. 3 over 1 times 3 over 6 equals 9 over 6. They match. I want to have a 12 on the top and a four on the bottom. Two fourths times six over one is 12 over four. They match. Coming down here, I want whole number eight, which means that I need to think eight times two gives me what? Because two is my bottom number, that's what I'm gonna divide by. 16 divided by two is eight. Let's check it. 1 half times 16 over 1. 16 divided by 2 gives me 8. They match. Last one here. I want it to be whole number 3, which means I need to think 8 times 3 gives me what? 24. So I need my top to be 24. 8 times 3 eighths. Let's check it. 8 over 1 times 3 over 8 equals 24 over 8. 24 divided by 8 gives me 3. Any questions? 
bring them with you to class. All right, loves, page three is just multiplying, nothing crazy. The last page I know is a stretch, but I'm really trying to get you guys to think a little bit more abstractly in different ways so that we have a better understanding of what we're doing. So let's give our fraction a denominator or whole number a denominator and multiply two times eight is 16, three times one is three. The top is bigger than the bottom, I have to simplify. Three divides into 16 five times with one left over. So this is the same as saying five and one third. Remember the top of my fraction is my remainder and my bottom number doesn't change. Give it a denominator. Four times one is four, five times one is five. This is simplest form, four fifths. Coming over here, let's give it a denominator. Seven times five is 35. Six times one is six. Top is bigger than the bottom. We divide to simplify. Six times five is 30, leaving five left over. So this is the same as five and five sixths. Over here, let's multiply. Three times nine is 27. Four times one is four. Divide to simplify. Four times six is 24. Subtract for three, six and three fourths. Two more on this page. Give it a denominator. One times two is two, two times one is two. Remember when the top and the bottom are the same, it says I have one whole. Last one, put it over one. Four times seven is 28, one times eight is eight. We're gonna divide to simplify. Eight times three is 24 leaves me with four. This is the same as saying I have three and four over eight, which I could also say is three and one half. Any questions? Bring them with you to class. All right, now gets another page where we are gonna multiply and simplify. No denominator, give it one. Five times 10 is 50. Eight times one is eight. The top is bigger, so we divide. 8 times 6 is 48. Subtract for 2. This is 6 and 2 whoop, over 8, or 6 and 1 fourth. 12 over 1. Let's go. 1 times 12 is 12. 1 times 2 is 2. Divide to simplify. 12 divided by 2 is 6. This is the same as saying I have 6 wholes. 13 over 1, 13, 1 times 4 is 4. Divide to simplify, 4 times 3 is 12. So I have 3 and 1 fourth. Remember, top is the remainder, the bottom is my denominator. 1 times 11 is 11, 6 times 1 is 6. When we divide, it goes in one time. We have 1 and 5 6. Two more, we're almost to the end of this one. 19 times three is 57, five times one is five. I know I'm really pulling out those multiplying and dividing skills. It's a really great refresh though. Five goes into five one time. Five goes into seven one time with two left. So this is the same as 11 and two over five. Last one on this page. 16 over three, divide to simplify. Three times five is 15, one left. This is the same as saying five and one third. Any questions? Bring them with you to class. All right, now gets last one where we are looking at some word problems to try and stretch ourselves. Final thinking. At the end of the soccer game, the 11 players each had about one fourth of a bottle of water left. How much water is left over? How many bottles will they need if they combined it all? So we have 11 players and they each have one fourth of a bottle. So when we multiply, we get 11 over four. If we simplify this, four goes in two times. 
three pieces left. So two and three fourths. If they combined it all, they're gonna need three bottles because they have two full bottles, but they still need space for that three fourths. For breakfast every morning, Brianna drinks half a glass of milk. How much milk does she drink each morning combined in a full week? So she drinks half a glass of milk. There's seven days in a week. Seven times one is seven. Two times one is two. We simplify. This goes in three times with one left over. So three and one half. Three and one half glasses. Rachel purchased six bags of candy. If she fills each bowl two thirds of the way, how many bowls will she need? So six bags of candy used to fill the bowl two thirds full. Six times two is 12. One times three is three. Divide to simplify. She's gonna need four bowls. Tim's garden produced 25 pounds of tomatoes. He gave his neighbor three fifths of them. How many pounds did his neighbor get in tomatoes? So 25 pounds of tomatoes, he was given three fifths. 25 times three is 75. One times five is five. When we divide, five goes into seven two time. I'm sorry, one time, my brain. One times five is five, subtract for two, bring it down. Five times five is 25. He got 15 pounds of tomatoes. Last two and then we're done for the week. Adrian needs to drive 30 miles to get to the zoo. If five six of her trip is on the interstate, how many miles is she on the interstate for? So 30 miles, which is five six of the trip. Three times five is 15, add your zero over 60. Let's divide to simplify. Six times two is 12. Six times five is 30. She spends 30 miles, or I'm sorry, 25 miles on the interstate. And then the last one, Ashley fills up her piggy bank one eighth of the way each week. How full will it be by the end of a five week month? So in this month, she gets to save five times. There's five weeks. So five weeks times one eighth of the way full. Five times one is five. One times eight is eight. It is five eighths of the way full. Any questions? Bring them to class. Have a good weekend, Meth.